So we're Wimbledon over for another year. It's time to go have a look at the rankings because there were some massive changes to the rankings this week. Not just on the men's side, but mainly on the women's side because a lot of players dropped a lot of points. But then, of course, we also had some random finalists as well, which make things really interesting in the rankings. Let's go over and see it. who won Wimbledon last week and what the scores were. All right, starting on the women's side, and of course, Krajikova getting her second Grand Slam title, beating Paulini in the final, 6-2, 2-6, And she got a massive boost in the rankings after winning this and very unlikely champion as well, considering how bad she's been this year. And then the men's final, Carlos Alcaraz winning in straight sets, 6-2, 6, -2, 6 -2, and six to beat Djokovic in the final. Interestingly enough, though, no change in the rankings for either of those guys, but we'll talk about that in a second. Some of the players that went up in the rankings outside the top 10 this week after Wimbledon, Musetti. He goes up to number 16 in the world after making the semifinals. That's nine spots higher than last week. Donna Vekic, she goes up 16 spots to number 21 in the world, also making the semifinals of Wimbledon this week. And Lulu Sun, she goes 70 spots higher than last week into the top 100 for the first time in her career after making that amazing run as a qualifier, making in the quarterfinal, she's up to number 53 in the world. So the players there that had some really good runs at Wimbledon getting rewarded. Players that went down to the rankings that are outside the top 10, Nicholas Jarry. He had a really good Wimbledon last year and unfortunately lost in the first round, so he got down three spots to number 23 in the world. Alina Svetolina, despite making the quarterfinals, also drops down the rankings nine spots to number 30 in the world, losing points from last year's semifinal. And Taylor Townsend, she's dropped down 11 spots, number 87 in the world, after losing the first round of Wimbledon as well and losing a lot of points there to her rankings. So some players there that didn't do well as they did last year, dropping down in the ranks. Let's go have a look at the WTA rankings to start with, because we had a few massive changes, but nothing up the top, which Fiontech staying at number one and Goff staying at number two. Sabalenka at three and Rebecca at four. But we did have a change to the bottom half with Paulini going up two spots to number five, pushing Pagula down to number six. Von Drusova completely falling out of the top 10, 12 spots lower than last week after failing to defend the points at Wimbledon last year. Making way for Zhang, who goes up to number seven. Zachary going up to number eight. Collins comes back into the top 10 to number nine. Jabur, she fell out of the top 10 as well after failing to defend the points from last year's final. She goes down six spots. And Krajikova, she goes up 22 spots into that number 10. 10 spot after winning Wimbledon. So some massive changes to the bottom of the top 10, especially with players like Jabur and Von Drusova, who've been in the top 10 for the best part of a year, both falling after poor Wimbledons. Having with the race of the finals and no change at the very top with Sviantec staying at number one, but there was a change with Sabalenka going down to number four after not playing Wimbledon, making way for Rabakina and Paulini who go up to number two and three. Goff also got pushed down to number five with Collins staying at number six. And Krajikova, 45 spots higher than last week, jumps into the top 10, number six. Seven in the race to the finals now, with Penko going up one spot as well to number eight. Kazakina, she goes down to number nine. And Zhang, she drops down three spots to number 10, pushing Kalinskaya out of the top 10 completely. So it's crazy how two good weeks can get you into the race to the finals, even though Krajikova overall this year has been very, very poor. So the US Open is the last Grand Slam of the year, so there's still chance for a lot of players to potentially be in the race to the finals. But as it stands now, that race to the finals, if that's what we get at the end of the year, I'm sold. All right, let's go over to the men's side now, because have many changes with Sinner staying at number one and Djokovic staying at two, Elkers at three and Zverev at four, Medvedev stays at number five. We did have a change in the bottom half with Rublev going down two spots to number eight, making way for Demonor, who goes to a career high number six in the world, three spots higher than last week. Herkatch doesn't move, he stays at number seven. Rude goes down one spot to number nine and Dimitrov rounds out the top ten for this week. So no major changes, just the change with Demonor overtaking three guys after making the quarterfinals, even though he didn't get to play that match, still got a nice boost in the rankings because of it. Over the race the finals now and still no one qualified officially for the race of the finals on their points but we're getting close Sinner he still stays at number one for this week but Alcaraz he overtakes Zverev after winning Wimbledon pushing Zverev down number three who had an okay Wimbledon but not enough to keep him at number two Medvedev he also goes up one spot after making the semis pushing Rude down to number five but Novak Djokovic back into the top eight to the race of the finals seven spots higher than last week after making the final of Wimbledon his best result for the season and it's good to see him back because he's been out of it for for the most part of this year. Dimonor, he stays at number seven. Sissi Bass got pushed down to number eight, two spots lower than last week. Fritz at number nine, and Paul jumps in at the expense of both Rublev and Dimitrov into that number 10 spot, two spots higher than last week, with Dimitrov and Rublev completely falling out of the top 10 for this week. But with the US Open Series coming up, expect this to change again once we hit the hard courts. So there you have it. They are the rankings after Wimbledon. Not much has changed up the top. I mean, you know, the number ones are still the same, number two and three and four, all still the same as last week on the men and women's tour, but there have been some massive changes to some of the players just outside the top 10 and obviously Krajikova flying back up the rankings but let me know down in the comments below what was the craziest moment for you at Wimbledon this year because it felt like we had a lot of crazy moments 
One of them being that Djokovic played. I think that's in, it's, in itself was a crazy moment, considering that he had surgery. Obviously, Elko is going back to back. Maybe Sinner and that Medvedev match. That was pretty epic on the women's side. We had a lot of upsets with Rabakina and Sviantek going out maybe earlier than we expected. But that's it. That's the rankings after Wimbledon. And it's starting to look a little bit interesting in the race of the finals.